Hey guys, Vegathron here. In this series, we'll be going through each and every charm in Hollow Knight. But this won't just be your normal charm guide. We'll be going deeper than ever before, by the numbers, to uncover absolutely everything we can about each charm. Can Grubberfly's Allergy hit the same target with both the nail and the projectile? Is Steady Body trash or God tier? Exactly how much attack speed does Quick Slash give? We'll answer all of these questions and more in what aims to be the most in-depth charm guide you've ever seen. And you can expect the same thing when Silk Song comes out. Now, without further ado, let's get into the episode. Glowing Womb. This charm costs two notches and uses soul to spawn hatchlings to attack enemies. This charm is found in Forgotten Crossroads in a secret area requiring Crystal Dash to access. Glowing Womb consumes eight soul to spawn a hatchling that will attack any nearby enemies, exploding on contact and dealing nine damage. Hatchlings can spawn once every four seconds and a maximum of four can be had at any one time. In terms of soul efficiency, this works out to 1.125 damage per point of soul spent, which puts it ahead of Desolate Dive, Vengeful Spirit and its upgrade Shade Soul, assuming they only hit one target. Taking into account their four second spawn rate and ignoring travel time, Glowing Womb deals a pitiful 2.25 damage per second, although if you have four ready to go before a fight starts, the 36 damage burst is nothing to scoff at, particularly early on in the game where it can easily one shot all but the tankiest of non-boss enemies. The main problem of Glowing Womb, similar to Defender's Crest, is it just doesn't really have a good way to scale into late game. Whereas spells in your nail get huge damage boosts and have great charm synergy, Glowing Womb stays at its already average starting point. Despite this, you can still make a pretty good summoner build with Glowing Womb, Weaver Song, and Grimchild. If hatchlings are killing enemies, then there's a good chance you won't be gaining much soul. But adding Grub Song and Sprint Master to this build will allow the special interaction between Weaver Song and Grub Song to solve this problem. Grub Song allows Weaverlings to give three soul each time they hit something, and Sprint Master lets them hit more reliably, giving you a way to constantly fuel your hatchling spawns. A well played nail or spellcaster build is always going to outperform a summoner build, but the strength of the summoner build lies in how little it demands of the player. You can solely focus on surviving and healing, throwing the occasional spell or nail strike, and still be doing respectable damage. Summon DPS can be very inconsistent and hard to calculate, but here we can see an example of only using summon damage to chew through the 1050 health of Brooding Morlack. In the end, it takes 127 seconds, which gives us an average DPS of 8.27, which is not bad considering all you have to do is stay alive to make it work. Again, this number's not exact, but gives you a rough ballpark figure of what it can be capable of. Glowing Womb Special Interactions Combining Glowing Womb and Fury of the Fallen will cause Hatchlings to deal an additional 5 damage, for a total of 14 when at 1 health. When Glowing Womb and Defender's Crest is combined, spawned Hatchlings will take on a different appearance. They will deal 5 less damage on impact, but leave a small AoE cloud for 1 second, dealing up to 5 damage. At best, this deals the same damage as a normal Hatchling, and at worst you lose out on damage due to enemies moving out of the cloud's effect. That's all for this episode. If you learned something, help me out by subbing and dropping a like. And I hope to see you in the next episode, featuring Quick Focus.